uh, I was on routine patrol, didn't see anything in particular, and I got a radio message that one of the tank battalions had a mission, and it was that two tanks, now oh, don't hold me to the exact words, but two tanks, anyhow, from the coordinates given, I went down and flew down, and sure enough, there was two barns that were near, and I was rather suspicious, but I flew down and saw one of them and fired one of my two bazookas and got out of there. But I made a 180 and came back and looked and saw the second one and fired at him, missed it also. Uh, and then flew away and promptly forgot it. As far as I was concerned, that was a failed mission. Either I just completely missed, which I thought I had happened, or <laughs> or my aim was so bad that I nobody had come close enough to to hear any explosions or anything like that. Now come forward many, many years. My son, Michael, who was about to retire as a full colonel and when he met a man who became a, a friend and his story was that he had talked to this colonel and in the conversation was he he knew about liaison pilots, or at least, and had and his story was that two Panzerfausts or whatever German tanks were killed by an American L4. First one and then the other, I presume, because I did not fire both bazookas at once. In order to do that, I would, with the rig I had, I would have to fly away, make some changes in the, in the firing mechanism, and then come back. And he said that I had killed both tanks. The Confirming data, I still insisted when I first heard the story that those two tanks that they're talking about, if it was me, I, I'm a poor marksman, I guess, but uh, I 
I wasn't so bad that I'd miss twice. And anyhow, his we, as we were talking about it and back and forth telephone conversations about the event. I remembered that I was the only one in the division who had two bazookas mounted. Charlie Carpenter, uh, he had <laughs> he had six. Good old Charlie, long gone by the way. And everybody else had one. Probably for good reason, because we did lose a few airplanes and it. It took a little bit of work to put the bazooka back. But anyhow, I was positive and am positive that I <coughs> was the only pilot that had only two. And that's my story of the two tanks I missed. Cleveland Air Races obviously had to be flown in Cleveland, and we lived in Cleveland. And my dad took me to the Cleveland Air Races and asked me a stupid question if I wanted to fly in a trimotor. And after getting off, a look, we got in line, and I think that the fee for flying in a, a trimotor in those days, flying in the trimotor, was only five dollars, but I wouldn't swear to that. But as we got in line, and gradually got near the plane that was very busy. I looked at the plane and I couldn't really believe but four or five loads. I told Dad, I said, Dad, that's Charles Lindbergh flying the pilot. And he said, no, Charles Lindbergh wouldn't be flying. But many years later, gosh, gosh, it was O2. My son is standing back there as a witness. And we went for the ride and I told him the story if he hadn't heard it 50 times in his growing up. And uh, as he and I approached, I told the story again. And We flew around, and the biggest thrill of my life to that point was that day. Biggest thrill flying, positive thrills that is, was much later. when I got a chance to learn to fly.
and when I was allowed to solo, I have a very clear memory. I landed the plane with the instructor in the back, and he, the instructor, got out and came forward and looked in the front where I was and said, I don't think it's safe up there, or up here, I suppose. You take it around three times, and we'll see after that. And I can remember so well going down that runway with that stick in my hand and the throttle in my hand and shouting. Hi-ho, silver, away! 